All right, I um, am in between delivering and going to work to my full-time job, but I wanted to drop this on you because Bracha Goldsmith, one of my favorite astrologers I listen to on a daily basis, I put this little thought in my head. Normally I take from other astrologers and I put my own take on it <clears throat> or I put my intuitive uh, expertise on it in astrology and <clears throat> I present it to you. This time, um, I thought while wanting to get more conscious beings on earth, a more make them more aware of everything, not just astrology, not just conspiracy theories, truths, what I like to call them, um, not just spirituality, but mental health. While we are moving through this transition of Pluto and Capricorn, meaning breakdown of corporations, breakdown of governments, Pluto return happened at the beginning of this year. Um, the nodes changed and went into their financial aspects or even anything in Taurus represents our values and our needs and wants, pleasures, all five senses. When you tie Uranus, all the, the, the outer planets, Uranus and Taurus, Neptune and Pisces that are compatible, right? And um, Pluto and Capricorn that is trining with Uranus because they're both in Earth signs and they are compatible with Neptune because Neptune is in a water sign in Pisces. All those things, Earth and water, are feminine energy. Um, feminine energy in the astrology and spiritual sense has nothing to do with gender. It has to do with um, receiving, being receptive if you have feminine energy or what was the other word that Brush used? Um, the masculine energy is action taking, something like that. I have to go back. But off the top of my head, um, the feminine energies are getting ready to switch over in the next couple of years to the masculine energies in the outer planets. So Uranus will be moving into Gemini, which is a masculine energy, air sign. <clears throat> um, Pluto will be moving into, and I skipped Neptune, Pluto will be moving into Aquarius, another air sign. So the things that were in the earth are moving into air. I skipped that Neptune on purpose because I was talking about the two planets that are currently in Earth signs, Uranus and Taurus and Pluto and Capricorn. And Neptune being that feminine energy in a water sign in Pisces will move into Aries. Okay, remember anything that moves into Aries, because Jupiter's moved into Aries, um, the inner planets moved past Aries by now, but Jupiter being one of the inner, closer to the outer planets is currently in Aries, starting a new cycle for Jupiter. So Neptune will be starting its new cycle as well as Uranus and Pluto. They'll all be changing into the masculine energies by 2025 and 2026. Um, so wrapping all this up and not making this too long. When you think of mental health in, in talking about genders, Women go through it differently than men. Women are more uh, emotional, but they're more communicative. Women can express using their feminine energies, their feminine powers, how we feel most times. Men tend to not do that. Men tend to want to take action versus saying something about it so that they know how to take the proper action. This is not always, this is not for everyone, this is not 100% ever. What I'm getting ready to say, though, <laughs> is going to maybe rub some people the wrong way. It even rubbed myself the wrong way, but I'm transforming. We're talking about Pluto transforming our collective. We're talking about Neptune and the images it gives that we either need to grasp onto when it moves into Aries and take action on. And I spoke about this actually in my um, solstice, talking about the future a little bit. But Uranus in Taurus 
is in its detriment. Taurus is already a slow and wants to be stable kind of sign. Uranus is an innovative, all about technology. It's ruling. Really, it rules a ruled by Aquarius. I mean, sorry, it rules Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. So when Uranus moves into Gemini, it'll move the collective more easily. It won't be slow, wanting to be stable, kind of lazy. When you think of Taurus, you think of a bull. The bull does definitely get down. <laughs> it can attack you. But at the same time, the bull can be in its lair, sleep, and chilling and not paying you no attention. <laughs> so, whereas Uranus and Taurus right now is bringing on food shortages, Uranus and Taurus is causing all kinds of panic with things, wanting things. And another person that I listen to is Janine, who does tarot, astrology, and truths. Um, so her, her, her um, YouTube is called Tarot by Janine, or Sending Ravens. She has two of them. She works with a bunch of other people, so the Bracha. Um, she mentioned yesterday, and she's a Taurus son, May 1st. She just had a birthday last month. She mentioned that yesterday that we are going to, I mean, that she doesn't want, as a tourist, she doesn't want to collect a lot of things. Some people, people want to send her gifts all the time and she doesn't want gifts. She just wants hugs. She wants you to send her ravens. And I thought that makes a lot of sense. A lot of tourists I want, I mean, that I know collect things because they want everything. <laughs> they want to be pleasured. They want everything they value, all the food, you know, and all that. So the only positive thing, well not the only, but one of the most positive things out of Uranus being in Taurus right now is that we're learning that with this food shortages we don't need that much food. Plenty of us got, plenty of us are technically obese. I don't like the labels. Plenty of us could, could live off of what we got on our own bodies right now and be okay. And then learn to eat less so that we will need less or want less. So that's the good thing about the food shortages <clears throat> with Uranus and Taurus. Uranus and Gemini will move us on to needing less. Um, Gemini represents the lower mind. Gemini also represents your community. So being innovative more in your community and needing less, but being able to give each other what you need because it's gonna be about a local energy with Uranus being in Gemini. At 2025, 2026, by Neptune being in Aries, moving out of the delusional state and moving on to taking being more brave and 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 being more of a um, pioneer with your dreams and aspirations. I touched this on this yesterday. Pluto moving into Aquarius is the big deal. Pluto again has to deal with transformation. After Pluto goes through its return right now, and we've done away with a lot of the the stock market uh, falling, the governments, nobody wanting to vote anymore or really believing in these government officials anymore, um, the corporations breaking down because nobody wants to work for them anymore, or they're they're having their shortages, right? <laughs> and Pluto moves into Aquarius. This is what's going to get y'all. <laughs> Aquarius is the weird sign. Aquarius is the, the AI sign. Aquarius has to do with why there's so many genders right now. <laughs> Why we're gonna have more genders? Why people will take off these masks and be reptilians under their skin? I don't care what y'all think, y'all can look it up. Pluto and Aquarius, just imagine when Pluto was in Capricorn back in 1776 when they created the United States, right? When it went into Aquarius back then, there was significant transformation, I'm sure, that we are gonna find out later because we, we all, if you watch this channel, you know history is a lie. But technically, back then, I'm sure that there was some other creatures that helped build what America is now. Not just blacks, Africans, Indians, whatever you want to call us. Not just the Europeans um, and the immigration, immigrate immigrate what am I saying immigrants <laughs> that came over here that's that's the Pluto in Aquarius back then just um, with this I can't even describe because I don't know what it is gonna be 
but there's going to be a different kind of being on this earth. <laughs> and the technology is going to be more advanced. The medicines are going to be more advanced. Um, this makes me think of the Jetsons, the show we used to watch when we were younger. The Jetsons had, um, and I was talking about Zane with this, and Zane is being innovative. We're still trying to finish these books, but her, her books have to do with futuristic things. So I'm thinking that's why. Not that we're going to wait all the way till Pluto <laughs> moves into Aquarius in two and a half years, but the way we're thinking is transforming so that we are prepared to walk on the same sidewalk as a reptilian. <laughs> to take out the, because again, <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm totally against transhumanism, but it's here. It's what people want to do. I want to do what I want to do, so why can't they do what they want to do? Going to be more genders. Let's just get, it's like 18 of them now. <laughs> um, as long as there's no pressure on those who don't want to are, are good with what they have okay um last thing i want to say about pluto and aquarius and i'm gonna wrap this up is that the transformation that comes from being innovative this will move us away from the needs of uranus being in taurus and all the shortages worrying about the shortages worrying about having enough food worrying about uh the the, the business is closing worrying about the housing market the gas going up, worrying about all those things. If we are innovative and we create things to replace those things that we are being released from, that are ending, they're done, we will be fine. Being innovative, for example, with Pluto and Aquarius, we don't have no more grocery stores. Everybody's either bartering or and I'm sure this is what they did again back in Pluto and Aquarius in the 1800s, the early 1800s, late 1700s. Bartering, growing your own stuff, having your own animals. My son was like, let's just get our own chicken so I can make eggs because he loves eggs. <laughs> but he, you know, my children know that those eggs probably go through a process before they reach our, go our grocery stores and our tables. Have your own chickens. We got to stop complaining. We got to move towards being innovative. <clears throat> Two and a half years can go just like that. 2022. I'm sorry, three and a half years. We're about right now when the nodes will be, the nodes will be in Pisces and Virgo. So that's mutable. That's transformative by 25, 26. The next nodes in between that, right now we're in Taurus and Scorpio, that has to do with the finances and the secrets and a lot of other things. Um, Aries and Libra has to do with our relationships and with ourselves and others. So that's the transformation that's in between now and what I'm talking about with Pluto going into Aquarius, Neptune going into Aries, and Uranus going into Gemini. The, 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 the masculine energies. Virgo and Pisces are the feminine energies with the nodes, but the transition also will be a masculine energy between Aries and Libra with the nodes. So I've talked about the outer planets. I put a little bit of node information in there. No, when I talk about the outer planets, that's dealing with the collective. I'm going to come back later and do a piece on the current inner planets that are, on, that are at home right now. The inner planets move faster, so that's why I want to talk about the future more. I'll come back later and talk about the inner planets and their futures. Peace. Oh, this nail. This one. <laughs>